the status of our ADHD care management today is unacceptable. And it has been for a really long time. Yeah. Um, as I will uh, sort of make an argument to you, we, uh, our, our innovation uh, in treatment, our innovation in diagnosis has stagnated for years. And we really need something fresh and we need something new and different. And so what I want to sort of uh, pose to you is the possibility of a world that, that is, that's here now, but that we need to take some steps to, to really embrace it and engage it where um, we can change that and we can innovate and we can engage patients, we can engage their caregivers, healthcare providers, uh, along with those of us in industry uh, to really change the landscape of clinical research. And, and to do that largely through the enormous amount of data that are generated through our healthcare experiences. So that's the, that's the punchline, and, and hopefully I can fill in some of the gaps of, of where we get. I'm gonna start and, and paint the picture, maybe even a, a little bit more gloomy picture of the, the status of ADHD clinical care today. A little bit about what it might look like tomorrow so that I can set some things up. And then I, I wanna introduce this concept of real world data and real world evidence and what it means and, and where it can take us. There are some unique challenges in thinking about how those kinds of data can be used specifically for ADHD, but more broadly in the field of psychiatry as a, as a sort of therapeutic area. And I, I, wanna, I wanna talk a little bit about those challenges and then finish up with how we can be thinking as a, as a whole community of, like I said, patients, caregivers, researchers, et cetera, uh, to start to move in the direction to take advantage of some of the, uh, the, the, the innovations that are possible. So let's talk about ADHD care today. Um, it actually doesn't look that much different than ADHD care 30 or 40 years ago. Uh, patient or, or uh, uh, the child of, uh, of a caregiver come to the attention of a, of a uh, healthcare provider, you, you know, some sort of presenting complaint. More often than not, at least in this country, it's a primary care provider, it's a pediatrician or a, uh, an adult primary care provider. There's some non-standard approaches to diagnosis some do it better than others, but uh, I'll, I'll show you some data to suggest that we're, we're not all on the same page. Uh, following a diagnosis then, usually frontline treatment is medication, uh, starting off typically with stimulant medications. You know, it's good that we have other options of non-stimulants now. And then if, if the provider is following best practices, they might refer the patient for some additional non-pharmacological treatment, usually in the form of behavior therapy or cognitive behavioral therapy. And then, then the patient comes back, no specific set amount of time to come back for their visit and their follow-up to monitor treatment, no specific uh, sort of um, outcome that's being monitored across patients, and that cycle continues. And that's the, that's the status of care. Um, what I wanna think about is what, and, and I should also say very importantly, um, that that typical clinical care, uh, there are a lot of disparities and, and there are many, many patients who don't uh, get the care that they need for a wide variety of reasons. 